skill development and entrepreneurship many times that we need to bring uh, the most important um, actors uh, when it comes to, eco, uh, to the ecosystem of skilling together. I have to be unfortunately quite quick because my flight is also at 2.30 to Delhi. Um, uh, I'm so sorry but there, it was already late but thank you very much again and this is India and so great for your flexibli uh, flexible <laughs> change of the program. What I would like to talk about, actually I'm not really fit for this session, um, I'm actually uh, one person, let's say it like this, from the last session, um, because I would like to talk about excellence and our um, learnings here in India and what should be done um, uh, more when it comes to the TBIT system, and uh, especially when it comes to the aspect of quality. Let me first say maybe a few words for those who don't know GIZ, what uh, uh, this organization is. It is the German Development Corporation, not the society, and it is um, a 100% um, um, state-owned company by the German government. And we are implementing this uh, development projects of the German government in um, almost 100 countries all over the world. And here in India, I am responsible uh, director for the topics private sector development and ed education. And one of the projects which um, I will talk about here in India is the Indo-German um, program for vocational education training, where we are working together with the MSDE. I think I don't have to talk in this room about the importance of Tibet. We have uh, roughly 1.3 million um, uh, young people seeking jobs every month in this country. Every month. Not every day, not, uh, not every year, not all 10 years, but every month. And um, I think this is, of course, a huge challenge that this, uh, that this country has to tackle. I'm very happy to have heard, um, I was already a little bit earlier here, that we have, um, I think, in that uh, area over there, a lot of teachers. Because at the end of the day, and this is also my talk, will be based not so much on the policy, although we are doing, like UNESCO, quite a lot on the policy level together with the ministry. But we are more, much more um, in so-called clusters all over India right now. We're focusing on six, but we will um, have up to 35 clusters in the coming years. And we are working very strongly together with the ITIs, with the system which is here in place in India, and try together um, with the Indian colleagues to improve it. But first of all, because quality is, I want to talk about quality and the importance of quality. I know India is a large country and you have to reach the numbers, um, this is clear, but without good quali qualified people, the numbers don't mean anything. I have to say it very strongly uh, here. But what does quality mean in the TVET system? One, labor market relevance. The students who are, to, who are going to ITIs, who are doing in, company, uh, in uh, other forms of trading, have to be trained in a way that there is a match um, um, with uh, the companies and the industry. And right now, I have to tell you, and as I said, I would like to share some of our experiences here in India. A lot of, unfortunately, the, a lot of, of the programs are not aligned with <coughs> the needs of industry. And this is something that needs to be changed. Two, which is very important when it comes to quality, is the aspect of um, learner-oriented teaching. What does it mean? Um, I think that also India, as in a lot of countries, has more, um, I would call it a talk and chalk lesson. You have somebody in the front discussing somebody, uh, something, presenting something. But um, in the environment which we are right now, in the world which we are uh, right now, talking about, for example, digitalization, um, if we really want our kids to be innovative, we cannot just stand in front and say something. They have to be the ones uh, who are um, instrumental part of the teaching. So we need to um, do learning out of the box in order to reach innovation. And we have to focus from frontal training to a form of training where um, the student in, is in the center. And thirdly, a point which is important when it comes to quality is the aspect of lifelong learning. You are not learning anymore in this world just uh, some subject and that's it. We all have to improve, have to learn uh, new aspects as you know yourself. Um, we talk about Industry 4.0. Um, the innovations are so fast that we have to teach uh, the students in a way that they are open and receptive to new learning. And India has a very specific problem in my point of view. Um, it's 
somewhere between industry 3.0 and industry 4.0. On the one side, you are great at, at the forefront when it comes to industry 4.0, no question. Um, if I say Bangalore, everybody of you have a lot of uh, pictures and ideas, uh, infosys, etc., etc. On the other side, you still are working, which is good, on um, improving the area of manufacturing. So that's why I am talking about industry 3.5. We are some, somewhere in between 3.0 and 4.0. And something that I think we all have to keep in mind, quality is never an accident. Um, it is always the result, the result of intelligent effort. So we all have to work together in having um, a quality, qualified and quality system. So what are we doing and what are we going to do? What is the focus? Where do we think um, are the areas which we need to tackle? I would like to talk about three areas and I know there are many more, um, but from our pr practical experiences, um, I would like to focus on three areas where we together with our partners here in India and with all of you uh, would like to work on. One is the aspect of public-private cooperation in Tibet. Um, we have... Um, made quite a lot of experiences that show that the connect between industry and government in India is not as it should be. Unfortunately, it's more that um, uh, each of this group is talking about the other group than talking to each other and with each other. And this is something uh, we would like to support, we would like to bring together. There are some, under this point, there are some specifics. Um, in our clusters, we are working very strongly together with industrial organizations, with business associations. Due to the fact that in the past, um, uh, quite a lot of business associations were not really involved in the official state uh, um, TVET system, we also need to do capacity development on that side. What does it mean to be um, um, an actor uh, in the TVET system? And of course, what we use as Germans coming from the German system is the dual uh, VET system. Here, a point of caution, we are not taking the German system and bringing it one-to-one -to, -one to India. That is impossible. We're taking some ideas, some learnings adapted to the, uh, to the region. And this is also India is a huge country. We, I would never say to all India. We, that's why we have clusters. We are, for example, in Bangalore, we're in Aurangabad, we're in Delhi. In that area, we adapt some ideas and try to bring together industry on the one side and public sector on the other side. What else needs to be done? Processes, a lot of you might know this, but still it's a point that I need to focus on. Processes, especially in the public sector when it comes to certification, when it comes to all these areas, need to be improved and need to be made much, much quicker. Because a lot of private sector companies, private sector organizations who want to work in the TVET sector lose their interest, lose their attention if it takes six months, one year, two years only to get an approval for something. And as I said earlier, and I underline this again, it is important the capacity development of business associations themselves to understand what role they can play in the system. Right now, um, I have um, uh, stressed this, we are working in six clusters all over the country, and especially together with partners like World Bank and the Strive and Suncal program, with which we have a very um, strong connection, we would like to get from six clusters up to 35, and uh, the colleague from uh, UNESCO said it, one aspect here is a, a lot of cross-learning. We have already quite a lot of models which function very well in those clusters, so we try not to reinvent the wheel, wheel but this cross-learning will be important. The next point, and here I come to what um, I think it was the colleague from Kashmir who uh, had uh, talked earlier, is the aspect of training of trainers. First of all, um, we have to underline and highlight the importance of trainers. And if I can ask all of you, for, for all the trainers who are here, I would like to clap one more time for them. Because at the end of the day, we can talk on these levels a lot, and we have a lot of policy ideas and so on and so forth. The implementation, as the colleague said, is happening in the classroom, and we have to uh, really pay our respect uh, to these um, men and women. What are we doing? We are working very closely together with the trainers. One aspect is, of course, the reputation for, for this, um, the respect and also the reputation of trainers has to be increased. 
And um, what we try to do together in the train the trainer system is, is what I have alluded to earlier, <coughs> that we change the uh, form of training from frontal training to a learner-centric understanding. What does it mean so that, again, the student is in the middle and we think about the student, what does the student need? Also, of course, especially when it comes um, to trainers who are working in ITIs, we really try to have this industry connect uh, through industry visits for, the, for these in, in, uh, institute-based trainers. And our, and our second phase of um, our program here, we will also focus very strongly which is, I think, in India, an untapped area, the so-called in-company trainers, where we would like to set uh, together with our partners, um, especially also NSDC, MSDE, some standard when it comes to in-company trainers. Um, also, and this is an example which we specifically uh, have in uh, Bevadi, these, these train, the trainer courses that we have also focus a lot on implementing or integrating um, many aspects of digitalization. What we have already done is, for example, in Bevadi, is that we use virtual reality uh, in order to train these um, students. Lastly, and I think this is an aspect in general which is important, um, not just here, uh, also in our own country, in Germany, it's the, and we don't talk about it often, it's the reputation of um, uh, the TVET system, the reputation in general. We, it's something we need to work on it also. We cannot just think that uh, and believe that um, if we improve um, the quality here and there, uh, we have a good TVET system, we must make it more attractive for students to come, to come um, and, and uh, be um, students in the TVET system. Not everybody can, can become a doctor, not everybody beca can become uh, you know, an academic. I think this is also an aspect which we need to work on and it's, it's something which is crucial. Um, I would like, unfortunately due to the time constraints that I have, um, stop at this point, I would like to summarize um, one aspect which shows again uh, this conference, I think it is also very important at the very end that um, as cheesy that uh, this might sound and you have heard many times, that the actors in the system work together. And last problem that I see and with this I would like to finish and uh, also with the invitation to work much closer together is we are working in silos. Uh, I think the ideas are already there. We don't need too many new ideas for the system. Not every week a new idea, not every week a new system. It's already there. Let's try to come together and um, uh, use the ideas, make cross-learning. And for this reason, again, um, especially to the organizers of this event, thank you very much for inviting us. And I can, uh, from our side, really uh, tell you that we would be more than happy if there is a future conference uh, to make this together with the GIZ also in the country. Thank you very much.